So that'll be showing you guys five of the most viral transitions in After Effects. So let's waste no more time and get straight on into it. First up, we're going to be making this white two frame glitch transition. And in order to make it first, you're going to need two clips. Start off by clicking on the top layer and making a white solid. So go to layer, new and press solid and go ahead and change the color to white, press OK, and now you'll have this solid right over here. Now go to the part where your clip changes. For me, it's gonna be over here. Go two frames back and cut the layer by pressing Control, Shift, and D. Delete the rest, and then do the same for over here. So now you'll have this white flash for two frames right over here. Go ahead and click on it, press S on your keyboard, press this unlink button right over here, and change 100 into 50. And now you'll have this in the middle. Go ahead and go to Align, and press this button right over here. This will align it to the left side. Now all you have to do is just duplicate the clip, move it two frames after, and now press this button right over here to align it to the right. Now, as you can see, we have this transition going from left to right, but this is a little bit boring. So let's go ahead and add a couple of shakes. To do this, press on your second clip right over here, press layer, new, and add an adjustment layer, and go to the place where your first flash starts and go four frames before that, which is 54 for me. And then go four frames after, which is going to be the second frame right over here. And go to effects and presets and search up S underscore shake. Drag it on your adjustment layer right over here. And now starting off, go to the first frame where your adjustment layer starts. Click on amplitude and slide it all the way down to zero. Now go to where your clip changes and type in 0 0.4. And now the same thing for the end. Go to the end of the adjustment layer and put the value to zero. Now go ahead and go to frequency and put the value to four and turn on motion blur for the S shake right over here. Now select the keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant and press easy ease. And now go to the graph editor right over here. Click this button right over here, drag it all along to around this point and now click the top one and drag this handle all the way to the right like so. Now we'll have this custom shake right over here. Since we have two white flashes, we're going to need to duplicate the adjustment layer. So go ahead and press Ctrl D on your keyboard to duplicate it. Slide it two frames to the right when your second flash begins. And now you will have the layer saved. And if we play our clip right over here, as you can see, we have a shake along with the white flash. Next up, we're going to be creating this viral pop in transition. Now, this is pretty simple to do. So listen along. Start off by preparing two clips. For me, I have these two clips of Dexter Morgan. Now just start off by duplicating your second layer right over here. So press Ctrl D on your keyboard. Right click the layer, go to time and turn on freeze frame. Drag the clip all the way to the start of the timeline. Go to the place where your clip changes and press Ctrl Shift D to cut the layer. Now go ahead and press Ctrl Shift S to pre-compose it. Select these options right over here, press OK. Now go ahead and double click onto your layer. Click the Roto Brush tool right on top. Double click it once again. Now you'll have this UI where you guys can cut it out. To cut out the background, press Alt and then trace the outside layer of your character. Now, once you're done roto brushing, you should have something roughly like this. Go ahead and press this freeze tool right over here and it's gonna start freezing the frames. Once complete, go back to your composition and now you'll have this cutout of Joe Goldberg right over here. Duplicate the layer by pressing Ctrl D. We're gonna go ahead and go to the effects and presets panel and search up turbulent displace drag turbulent displace to the second layer over here and now we'll have this little distorted look on the outside of our character for the value of amount put it to 135 for size keep it at around th uh, 35 and for complexity put it to 6 and you guys will have this little aura effect right over here now what you guys want to do is set a keyframe for size at the beginning of the layer. Go to the end and put it to around 55 or so. Press U on your keyboard, select the keyframes and easy ease them. You guys are going to want to put uh, a little bit of a glow in the background of the aura. So go ahead and search up deep glow in the effects and presets panel and drag it over to your layer and put it to around 0.6 for the exposure on top of that i'll be adding drop shadow onto the layer so that we can differentiate it from the background go ahead and put it to 100 percent for distance put it to zero and for softness put it to 35 now as you can see we have this aura but the problem is it's not animated so what we're going to want to do is go ahead and go back to turbulent displace on top press alt on your keyboard and press evolution type in time asterisk 250 and now what we should have is the background aura is going to be animated as you can see right over here select your two layers right over here and pre-compose them by pressing ctrl shift and c press ok 
Now we're going to be adding some graphs. Start off by pressing P on your keyboard to bring up the position values. Right click position and press separate dimensions. And now for Y position, select the keyframe right over here, drag it to the end of the layer, put the Y value down until you can't see the character. Go ahead and easy ease the keyframes, go to your graph editor and just drag these handles around to the middle so that it creates a graph looking something like this. Now, obviously, if you guys want, you guys can adjust it and everything. But personally, this is my favorite. And now add motion blur to your layer and we should have this popping in effect switching into our main clip for our third transition we have this halftone ripple effect and to make it start off by having two clips and go to the part where your clip switch which for me is at one second go ahead and go to layer new and press adjustment layer now cut the layer three frames before your clip switches and cut the end to where your clip ends now go ahead and select your layer go to effects and presets and search up bcc ripple dissolve drag it to your adjustment layer for height put it to 15 for animation tuning, for easy ease, put it to around 35. And for ease out, put it to 55. And for dissolve duration, I recommend you guys put it to around 45. And as you can see, we would have created this simple ripple effect right over here. Create an adjustment layer, cut this layer one frame before the clip switches, and then cut it off at the end right over here. Now we're gonna go to the effects and presets panel and search up S underscore halftone, drag it to our layer right over here. And we're gonna put the dots frequency to around 85. So we can see that there are more dots on the screen. And for this layer, all we're going to have to do is just select the opacity right over here and put it to 100. And near the end, we're going to put it to zero. Easy ease the keyframes. Go to the graph editor, click this handle, drag it all the way down, and then slide this handle all the way to the left around this much. So let's go ahead and add a shake on top of that. To do this, create an adjustment layer once more and put your time indicator to the place where your clip switches. Now cut the clip 15 frames before your clip switches and then cut it 20 frames after. Now go to your effects and presets and search up S underscore shake. Drag it to your layer. Now put the amplitude to zero at the start of the clip and now go to the part where it switches and put it to 0.5. Go to the end and put it to zero. And for the frequency, we're gonna leave it at around seven. Turn on motion blur. Now easy ease the keyframes and we're going to copy the same graph as before. Drag this handle to the right and drag this handle to the right as well to create a long lasting but also clean shake which we can have. Now we have this cool halftone ripple effect which you can use in your edit. Now we're going to be making this radial blur transition with a black border. And to do this you're going to need more than two clips. So go ahead and recompose them and line it up just like how I did. Now for the first layer put it to the start of the timeline. Now for your second clip overlap it 20 frames with your first. And for your third and fourth overlap it around 15 frames. So as you can see we have 15 frames of a difference. So starting off go to the place where your second clip starts. Press S on your keyboard and create a keyframe right over here. Keep the value at 100 and go to the place where your clip overlaps. Preferably in the middle change your keyframe value to around 125 so that we can create a little zoom in just like so. Easy ease the keyframes. Go to the graph editor. Create a graph looking something like this. After that, go ahead and press T on your keyboard to bring up opacity, create a keyframe, put it to zero, around where the first clip ends, put it back to 100. Now go ahead and easy ease the keyframes. Go ahead and press U on your keyboard on the second clip. Copy the keyframes by pressing Ctrl C. Go to your third layer, press Ctrl V. Go to your fourth clip and click it and press Ctrl V. Now we'll have this effect applied for every single layer. Now it's time to add the radial blur. Layer, new. And create an adjustment layer and for this radial blur we're going to want to make it 10 frames before it actually switches the clip so go ahead and cut the layer over here now cut it at the end of your last clip go ahead and go to effects and presets search up bcc radial blur put it onto your layer and for the center value i recommend you guys click this anchor point right over here and put it to where your character roughly is start off by going to the blur amount and set a keyframe and put the value to zero now go to where your clip switches and put it to 25. easy ease the keyframes and as you can see we now have this radial blur applied for every single clip now we're going to need to add that glitch effect we had so go 10 frames after your first clip switches and go ahead and create another adjustment layer and cut it to where your time indicator is and then cut it when the clip ends. Now go to your effects and presets once again and search up Glitchify. 
drag it to your second adjustment layer go to the start of the adjustment layer and press glitch five amount and put it to zero go to roughly where the middle part is and put it to 50. now go to the end and put it to zero and for glitch device speed put it to around 15. go to channel glitch and turn it off and now go to color glitch and also disable it and go to compression and make sure it's off and ignore the advanced part now we're going to go to the image glitch section and go ahead and go to glitch block and make sure to put the amount to zero and for image glitch put the pixel streak to zero and go to glitch slice and put the amount to 15 put the position a little bit higher if you guys want now we'll have this glitch effect applied to every single layer press ctrl y on your keyboard go to the color make it black press ok now go ahead and go to five frames after your first clip switches cut the clip go to the end and Cut the clip once more now we're going to go ahead and go to the top layer over here press this rectangular tool over here and press q on your keyboard to make it a rounded rectangle and then create a mask looking like this once it roughly fits this amount of your screen go ahead and press m on your keyboard to bring up the mask properties and go to inverted and press this button over here now what we're going to do is press f on our keyboard to bring up the mask feather and put it to around 25. go ahead and press s on your keyboard and at around this point we're going to put the scale value to 100 and when the solid layer starts increase the keyframe value until you can't see the borders now copy this keyframe value and put it at the end as well as your first keyframe value which is at 100 paste it near the end of the clip this will create a zoom in for the effect and also create a zoom out at the end go ahead and easy ease the keyframes press motion blur on your layer now we have made this blur transition for the final transition we're going to make this shatter effect to start up we're going to need two clips make sure that the top layer is overlapping the bottom layer uh, and your timeline looks something like mine now i have this clip of the joker and what we're going to do is go ahead and go to our effects and presets panel and search up shatter drag it to your first layer over here on the top now it'll look a little bit weird at first but go ahead and go to wireframe and forces and press rendered and as you can see we have this clip and we're stuck with these blocks to fix this go to shape and press on bricks and put it to glass and it'll create this glass effect right over here go to force one press radius and put it to zero go to two frames after you set your first keyframe and put the radius to one if you look at the clip it does shatter a little bit too slow and to fix this we're going to go to strength and put it to 25 and for rotation speed we're going to put it to 0.4 and for viscosity put it to 0.01 now we have this shatter effect and in order to make the clip look more defined we're going to go to drop shadow and add it onto our layer put the opacity to 100 distance to 0 and softness to 85 so we can create this little shadow effect and obviously who can really make a transition without adding an amazing shape so go ahead and click your top clip Make another adjustment layer in this case you guys can use ctrl alt and y to create it go 10 frames before the clip switches and 20 frames after add s underscore shake drag it onto your layer go to amplitude and put it to zero go to where your clip switches and now put it to 0.5 and once again at the end of your layer put it to zero and for the frequency we're going to keep it at around five and create motion blur easy ease the keyframes and go to the graph editor and now we're going to put in our custom graph which is by sliding this handle all the way to the right and also sliding this handle to the right once more and just like that we have completed making this transition that's pretty much it if you guys have enjoyed the video make sure to drop a like and subscribe and tell me what other tutorials i should make in the future but anyways that's gonna be it goodbye